Guys, welcome back. It has been a few months and I apologize for that. It has been a crazy busy time right now, but putting that aside just for a minute, we have got a huge upgrade due to the truck here today. It actually might take a week. Um, I'll explain to you why that is in just a minute, but we are going to be upgrading the fuel system on this truck. So just a quick reminder on this, it is a stock fuel truck, right? So it, it has a little bit larger of a turbocharger. It's got a 64 millimeter turbo from Woldfab, but except for a lift pump, the fuel system is completely stock. It has an LBZ, CP3, and FPR, but they're still a stock replacement and then stock injectors. So on its best day, we might be pushing 600 horsepower, probably just a little bit less, uh, with the fuel now being the limiting factor. The 64 millimeter can burn just a little more fuel than what the truck can currently provide it. And the first step in changing that out is putting in a different CP3. All right, guys, so this is a 12 millimeter Exergy CP3 pump capable of just shy of 1,000 horsepower. So what really happened here is originally I was planning on buying a 10 millimeter pump. Fleece performance was having a 15% off sale over their Black Friday um, so that pump is capable of about 750 horsepower uh, worth of fuel and being asked for maybe 700 750 somewhere in there um, with the 12 mils then being capable of just shy of a thousand or right around a thousand um, so what happened here is actually we pulled the motor out of a good friend of mine's truck um, he's knocking on the door about a thousand horsepower um, was gonna do a rebuild on it um, and he wanted to upgrade just a little bit more so uh, he wanted to be able to go to a 14 millimeter pump so he went ahead and sold me this 12 millimeter pump, which I am now going to install in my LB7. Okay, so to start this job, I've gone and pulled the wheel off and I've got my coolant. Actually, I stopped it so it wouldn't be loud for the video, but I'm uh, draining the coolant into a bucket there out of the radiator. So first things first, you have to remove my hot side pipe to then also be able to remove the Y bridge up here. Um, and then we're gonna have to take off all this extra stuff here in the front and this light's kind of making it dark, but the alternator and the AC compressor gotta go, get all this stuff out of the way. The intake horn off the turbo's gotta go, so the intake has to go as well. Um, and then we should be pretty well as close as we need to get. Once again, getting that Y bridge out will be fun. Um, but once all that stuff is out of the way, probably also take off the thermostat housing and that kind of stuff. Uh, but basically just take off all the pretty piping here off the top and a few extra pieces and we should be hopefully pretty close to where we need to get uh, to be able to get that CP3 out and get the new one in. So the next step here would be to remove your coolant crossover pipe on a standard truck that would come from right here at the radiator and come around the back and the back of the thermostat housing. On this truck, since I have the billet piece in this crossover pipe, I just need to undo the clamps here, pop this pipe out of the way, and then I can just remove that uh, thermostat housing as well. Once that's out of the way, then I can get rid of my AC compressor, just flip him up over the top of the reservoir over there, and then I'll pull the alternator out and set it over on the bench and all this area should be a lot more free, and then we'll go ahead and get the uh, intake horn off as well. Okay, so we've got the alternator out and we've got the AC compressor out as well as the thermostat housing. All this is getting to be a little bit more opened up. So now we need to remove the intake horn here so that we can get the Y bridge out that's underneath it. Now for the intake horn, I've gone through this a couple times, but I wanna go through it again because I still keep getting questions on how you actually get this thing out. Now this is an aftermarket horn, so actually the bottom two bolts are actually slots. So the only one that I actually have to fully remove is that guy right there, which is nice because he's right on top and he's the easiest one to access. This guy here, all I do for that one is I put a 10 millimeter wrench on it and just all I have to, once again, all I have to do is loosen it up a little bit. So I'll just get a wrench in there, bust him loose a little bit and it'll be easy. This one right here, you can get in there with just a 10 millimeter socket and one extension on a ratchet and you can get him to come out pretty easily as well. On this bottom one, I put two ratchets together with a swivel to be able to reach in from inside about right in here. I reach inside there and I'm able to turn it once again, just turn it a few turns to be able to get it loose. Then I can just rotate the entire thing and pull it out. If you do need to pull it out, pull the bolts out all the way. If you have an OEM horn, it's the same process. You just have to take the bolt all the way out.
All right, guys, so here comes the fun part, and it's removing all of these steel fuel lines and all of the return lines and all that kind of stuff that just run over the top of the CP3. I have less than normal because I went ahead and ran a half-inch line right here directly. This guy right here went, goes directly into the CP3 instead of going across and through the uh, fuel injection control module, and obviously I don't have a fuel filter over there or anything like that, so I've already got a few less lines than most guys here do, but realistically, guys, just take a couple of pictures to remember where everything goes and take them off one at a time, um, and just make sure you remember where they go, and it really isn't that bad, but go ahead and just take the time now and pull all of these fuel lines out of the way um, so you can access the CP3 and the Y bridge underneath it. All right, so we got all the lines out of the way. You can see the CP3 here is almost completely freed up. Um, basically all we need to do yet is get this Y bridge out of the way. So to get that out of the way, first thing we need to do is get rid of this distribution block. Now there's just two bolts that hold it down and a couple of lines on the back of it that need to pop off. And we'll lift that up and remove it. And then we'll just have to pop this Y bridge out, getting the eight bolts that are on it, and then popping it out of place. And then we're on to actually pulling the CP3 out. Okay, so for the Y bridge itself, there are eight fasteners here. There are four bolts, one, two, and then two more on the back side, just like those on the top. And then down on the bottom, you can see that these are studs. Hopefully my light's not in the way, there you go. Those are studs with nuts on them. Once again, there's four of them, two per side, and then two more on the opposite side of the V8. They're all 10 millimeters. You can pop those off using a couple different extensions and ratchets in a 10 millimeter socket. It's a little bit tight on this side, depending on how much you decide to take off of the lines and all of that, uh, but it shouldn't be too big of a deal. Um, I always usually keep this harness in place as well, but a few connectors and ground cables down at the bottom, and you should be able to pop this whole thing out of the way if you wanted to as well, just personal preference. But once all those are out, you should be able to pry up on it gently, and the whole thing will pop out. All right, guys, so everything is out. We are officially done taking everything out except for the two studs that are closest to the CP3 that held the Y bridge in, those might need to get pulled out as well, um, purely so there's enough room that when the CP3 comes out, there's enough room for it to fall out of its cavity and then be able to pull it straight up. Uh, I'm going to try it without pulling those out first and we'll see how it goes. Um, so to actually get the CP3 out, it's a lot easier just to show it on the new one. Um, but basically it's underneath this coolant thermostat housing. There are four bolts. You can reach them. Basically it's hard to see, but basically you'll just reach in from right underneath here. And you can get all four of those out and I'll just show them on the new one instead. Uh, they're 12 millimeter sockets. Um, we'll, a 12 millimeter socket will pull them out. Um, there's just four of them and the whole thing should be able to pull out towards the back of the motor. Okay, so if you can imagine this sitting in the valley, just how it is right now with this deep V pointed straight down, there's four 12 millimeter socket head screws that need to get popped out. One, two, three, four. Let's see, I've already got one of them out here. So basically you just need to reach underneath there like I just showed with the socket and the ratchet and pull all four of those bolts out and the whole thing should be able to be pulled backwards towards the turbocharger to loosen it and then you should be able to lift it out while also twisting it upwards like this towards yourself to be able to get enough clearance to get it out of the engine bay. All right guys, we are halfway done. The CP3 is now out. Like I did mention before, I did have to remove the two foremost studs right there on each side um, just to be able to get that CP3 out. It would have been very hard to do otherwise. To do that, it wasn't really too bad. I'm trying to get this put in sight. So basically I had this stud here and all I had to do was basically put two of the nuts on each one, tighten them together, and then turn it out. They came out pretty easily. So we'll put those back in once the new CP3 is in, but we're halfway done. Now looking at both of them side by side, you can see that there's a really big difference between the inlet sizes on the OEM pump versus the 12 millimeter pump. And that's because I swapped out the inlet port on the OEM pump to a half inch line versus the smaller size that comes from the factory. So we're gonna go ahead and swap those over to the same threads. Of course, it fits in the same, uh, same side. It just allows me to run a half inch line directly to the CP3, which allowed me to delete the fuel filter and all those excess lines, just quite a bit cleaner. So I'm gonna go ahead and swap that out and then we'll go ahead and put this new pump directly in the truck. All right, we are in. I realized I did not actually film this. I couldn't really get a good angle to show you how it goes back in, but basically it goes in the exact same way that it comes out. You kind of have it tilted down with the cam gear pointed down, um, slide it down and then rotate it towards yourself. 
and then shimmy it into position and then you get your four bolts in from the back back here and start them threaded in so now i need to go ahead and tighten those up and the cp3 itself will be installed and then we'll work our way backwards starting with the y bridge we'll get those two studs put back in reseat the y bridge with the new seals and silicone get that snug down and then we'll work on the fuel lines and then work from there. Okay, so the studs are back in for the Y bridge. I just wanna reiterate how to do this. You can see on the right one there, there's two nuts that are held together. Basically, I just tighten two nuts together so you have a good grip on the stud and that's how I got them out then. You can just turn the nut then and pull the whole stud out and then you do the exact same thing to put them back in. Just tighten it all the way down and then break those two nuts loose from each other with two wrenches and you should be able to thread them off, leaving the stud in place. And now we'll just clean this area up and we can put the Y bridge back in place. All right guys, here comes a really fun step and it's actually not any fun at all in my opinion. I don't really like doing these Y bridges. So getting this reseated and sealed is actually very important. Um, otherwise you can blow quite a bit of your boost pressure right out of there, uh, making your truck smoke a lot and not be responsive, you know, et cetera, et cetera. So how do you put this back in? Uh, everybody does this probably just a little bit differently. That's fine, uh, but this is how I do it. First of all, clean up the surfaces as well as you can. Um, you know, just get, if you did use an RTV or anything before, make sure you get all of that off or almost all of that off, you know. If you just had the seals, that's obviously been very easy. So what I like to do is I like to put a little bit of RTV around the surface, and then I also then use the rubber seal. So um, you could probably just use the rubber seal. I've had it leak that way. Um, had I've messed with that earlier this summer, actually it was I think last summer, had that issue um, where I just had the seal and it had a huge boost, boost leak right out of the Y bridge. Um, so what I've done and now since then is I have put RTV around it and then put a new seal in and then put everything back in the truck and it's held very, very well. So that's what I'm going to go ahead and do again. So I just use a regular black RTV, you know, their high grade one, whatever it is, um, and then just get brand new stock seals for your Y bridge, um, put them together and then we'll go ahead and insert it in the truck, seat it down, get the bolts in, get the studs, the nuts on the studs and basically just let it sit for 24 hours, which is gonna take you know the rest of the night to get the truck back together anyway. Um, no problem, we'll let it sit, and we'll be good to go. We're both seated completely down inside their rings. We have the outside of it completely set up with RTV. So we're ready to put this in the truck. Okay, let's talk about the process and the order of operations for putting this Y bridge in. Obviously you can just kind of set it down on there. You'll find that it doesn't like to seat all the way down, but it seats just enough to be able to get onto those studs right there on the bottom. So what you do is you put it down as far as you possibly can by hand, and then you put those four nuts on their studs and use them to help snug it down into place. As you tighten those nuts up, it'll pull it down into place. Do not try to put these bolts in on the top until you are sure that it is completely seated down into its home position or else you'll never be able to get those screws in correctly and you'll probably end up cross-threading one in and it's going into soft aluminum and trust me, it will suck. So do not do that. Make sure that it is properly seated all the way down with those four nuts first. They don't have to be completely tightened. Um, in fact, the way I just did it here was I used the four nuts to tighten it down, um, to kind of seat it down while they were still semi-loose. Then I started the top four bolts and then I went back down and I tightened down the bottom four nuts. It was just easier that way. That way I was made sure that all eight of the fasteners were in their holes, were lined up and, and were going to be fine. Um, one thing I did off camera is I had to put in multiple helicoils in this one because I did this wrong um, a couple years ago. And that's why I had that big boost leak and all that kind of stuff. And it was halfway messed up. I was able to get it to hold finally, but just so you know, um, do this in the right order of operations. Put it down, put the four nuts on, help let those help you sink it down into its home position, then put the four bolts on top and tighten everything up. Now, also when you're tightening up, remember these are all threaded into aluminum, so do not over tighten them. They don't have to be crazy tight um, to be able to seal correctly. So just get them snug with the quarter inch ratchet and you should be good to go. Okay guys, so basically once the wiper's in, really all of the hard stuff is done. Basically you gotta put your fuel lines back together and then it's kind of just putting all your top end accessories back in the truck. You know, your AC compressor and the alternator and you know all the piping and that kind of stuff. But really all that stuff's pretty much just bolt-ons. Pretty easy, it's the getting that Y bridge and the CP3 itself swapped out and that kind of stuff that is more challenging. Uh, but once those are done, you're kind of on the downhill slope. So I'm actually not gonna film a lot of that. 
And the reason for that, guys, is I'm on a really big time crunch. Um, if you watched my last video, you know that my wife and I are expecting our little baby girl. Um, actually, Ashley is now five days late, and so we are probably gonna be going to the hospital here either tonight or tomorrow, we don't really know. I'm going to go ahead and flip forward now um, to when probably after we've had the baby when I get a chance to put this truck back together and we'll test it out just a little bit. But yeah, that's what's going on in our lives. Hang on just a minute. It is raining, so I can't go too wild with it, but I have been able to do some, some long pulls. Um, and before, without the CP3, the ECM would be asking for 26,000 PSI um, at the rail, and the truck would kind of flat, you know, kind of plateau out around 23 and a half or so. Um, and now we are holding 26,000 PSI without even trying. So clearly, this pump is doing its job. We are not going to get a whole lot more horsepower out of it just as it is. We would need new injectors, you know, to be actually be able to do anything real with it. But as of right now, this is a great stepping stone. The CP3 seems to be healthy, um, seems to be working as well as it can. So we are in really good shape. All right, guys, so we are back home. The truck is now completely wet, which has been perfectly clean for like three weeks. So I guess I deserve that. But uh, honestly, guys, it seems to be running really, really well. I'm super happy with it. I've checked over everything. There's no leaks, anything like that. So this pretty much wraps up the install then. Um, just take your time. That's all I can say. This is probably a 10 hour job, especially if you've never done one before. Uh, it's definitely gonna take you probably 10 to 12 hours to get it done. You know, it probably took me that long just because I was filming that kind of stuff as well. Um, but even so, it went pretty well. Once again, just take your time, make sure you know where everything goes, check over everything, make sure all the fuel lines are tight, everything like that. But other than that, um, it's really not that bad. It's kind of a big scary job, but at the end of it, it's not that bad. So we were able to get this done and it's perfect timing. We are headed to the hospital here in just a few hours um, for an induction. So super excited about that. Um, but yeah, probably end up editing once, once we get home and everything's settled down. But guys, have a great Christmas, have a great new year. We'll see you in 2021.